Ahoy everyone, thanks very much for tuning in. So I'm Tim here at Digital Armor and today gonna be talking about Commander 2018 and some of the tribal cards involved in the set. Welcome everyone. Before we get started, if you want to see more fun, casual magic every Thursday and Sunday, please take a second to hit that subscribe button, tap the thumbs up, and consider becoming a patron of the channel. Also, please check out the channel's sponsor, Arcane Cards. They stock NTG singles, plenty of sealed products, and have great shipping. You can find the link to the shop down in the description, as well as a code to get 10% off your first order. With that said, let's get going. Commander 2018 isn't much of a tribal product to be honest. We were absolutely spoiled last year with all the cats and dragons and a cat dragon. But there's still a few gems to be found in here, so I'm going to share my thoughts on some of them. We'll go through deck by deck and see what treats the tribal aficionado has to play with. Exquisite Invention is up first and there's slim pickings for true tribal cards here although you could stretch the definition and say most of the deck is thought to tribal. Bruder Clad, Teclaw Engineer is a legendary artificer and a haste enabler for all our creature tokens. It also pumps out a mirror token on each of our combat steps. The mirror aren't much of a powerful tribe but do have some useful cards for other decks and the only other real token producer is the Battle Sphere. So as it stands, Bruder Clad is not the tribal commander we were looking for. Duplicant, however, is a nifty little tribal card. Originating from Mirrodin and having a reasonable number of reprints, including a very lovely masterpiece, it allows you to exile any non-token creature on the board and basically become that creature with its power, toughness and its creature type. Useful for stealing an opponent's bomb, triggering our own leaves play trigger, or if you can give it a flash with say a Vidalcan Ori, it can sort of save a creature of ours that's about to die. It's not a true tribal card, but the copying of the creature type makes it worthy of an include in this list. Moving on to the subjective reality deck, and we get a lot more hits. Verena, Lich Queen, is a legendary zombie wizard who can create zombie tokens and has a great onboard loot and life gain ability. Generally, three colour zombie commanders have been Grixis. We've got Nekusar, Cedris, and Thraximunda. But now we have Verena, it opens the gates to a zombie build that includes white. There's 14 other white zombies available, and notable includes are Tide Hollow Sculler. Daxos the Returned and Wayward Servant. I guess the big decision is whether swapping out the few red zombies for white ones is a step up or not. I'm certainly going to give it a go though. Yuiko, the Tiger Shadow, Legendary Human Ninja, yes! Drawing cards from Ninja Damage, Command Zone Ninjutsu, 3 mana so perfect for tiny leaders, this card is so good and carries a hefty price tag too. Possibly the most expensive card from the set, weighing in at $17.58. The only drawback here is the lack of other ninjas. There are currently 13 others available, and two are from Unstable, so that's not a whole lot of support, meaning a true ninja tribal deck still isn't really possible. Come on, return to Kamigawa. Yenit, Cryptic Sovereign, is a legendary Sphinx, and whilst it doesn't provide any Sphinx tribal support, it is a nice option as an alternative to the existing legendary Sphinxes. The only other three colour legendary Sphinx is Sharoom, and he's more about the artifacts than the free cards. Pretty much all Sphinxes are blue, or Azorius colours, so adding black doesn't give us much in terms of tribal support, but it does widen our choice with supporting cards to pad the deck with. Army of the Damned was first printed on Innistrad and has since become a minor Commander Precon staple, appearing three times now. For 8 mana we get 26 power and toughness on the board, and then for 10 we can do the same from our graveyard. This is huge for Zombie Tribal, as no doubt you'll have a Lord or two down, so this is a powerful finisher, or at least tips us over the edge of taking a player out. Also, as it's mono black, getting to that big mana shouldn't be difficult with access to lands such as Cabal Coffers and Cabal Stronghold. 
Finally from this deck we get a reprint of Crib Swap. This Lorwyn reprint is a tribal instant that has Changeling. At first glance that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would you need an instant to have a creature type? The main reason I can think of is that back in Lorwyn we had some cards that could tutor for it and interact with it, but not so much in this pre-con. Other than that, it's a nice bit of removal in white. It totally removes the original creature, unlike, say, an O-Ring, that just sits on it. You just have to make sure your opponent isn't playing tribal, otherwise they'll still have a useful token. Nature's Vengeance is the Jun deck and brings a trio of tribal cards with it. Gyrus, Walker of Corpses, is a three colour legendary Hydra, however on closer inspection doesn't really synergise too well with some of its Hydra friends. Returning a Hydra to the battlefield as a copied token won't get you the plus one plus one counter triggers a lot of the time, so it'll only be useful with certain creatures that come preloaded as it were. However some Hydras, like the Kalni Hydra, make for great targets. There are also no black hydras, unless you count good old progenitus, so there's also that to consider. Nesting Dragon is a nice new card for dragon strategies, surprise surprise. It gives you a dragon egg with every land drop you make, and if you keep throwing down lands, you'll have more eggs than Sigourney Weaver does in Alien. It's also a 5-4 fly for 5 itself, which isn't bad at all. Finally we come to Thantis, the War Weaver, Jun Spider Extraordinaire. So forced attacking is always great, it affects everyone, but if you're a true spider you should have enough of a butt to block with little consequence. There's also the deterrent of Thantis getting even more hench if anyone chooses to swing at you. Up until now, Ishkanar has been the go-to spider commander, and by adding red to the mix it's only unlocking a further three spiders, Needle Peak, the Giant Trapdoor, and Dragon Lair. All in all, there's 48 spiders to choose from, and whilst many are basic and unnoteworthy, it can be a really fun, super defensive deck, and with red now, you could sit back and go for the direct damage route possibly. Adaptive Enchantment is the last of the decks and it brings just one tribal card to the table. Tavasa the Sunlit is a Bant Merfolk. This is a first for our fishy friends who previously could have gone blue-white or blue-green in multicolour but not a combination of all three. She's actually more suited to a non-tribal Enchantress style deck just like the pre-con but if you want your Tishana fighting side by side with Sig then this is the fish for you. And there you have it, my little guide to the tribal side of Commander 2018. If you haven't already, please remember to share this video wherever you hang out, be it Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe and then head over to Arcane Cards for your MTG singles. Thanks so much for watching, catch you all on the next one. Cheers!